got what I need And you say he's just a friend And you say he's just a friend Oh baby you <laughs> God what are you okay Man you already know what it is Jay Williams let's live life And we're back Play too much, you play too much. Go on somewhere, you play too much. But why are you always playing? Stop playing, stop playing, stop playing. How many times you heard that? Today's video is gonna be a little bit different, but it's gonna be fun to do. Cause there's just a bunch of these. How many times you seen somebody that just, it's, it's a whole entire grown man that acts like a child, just plays way too much. Hello, officer. People are under the, you know, the misconception that age makes you a man. No, age does not make you a man. Your maturity level, the way your brain works, what you think, the things you say, the way you conduct yourself, how you act, the level of responsibility, what you do day to day, those type of things make you a man. You don't just be, get to be a man because you're 18. No. You don't get to just be a man because... You're 21 years old. No. I met a whole lot of men that looked like men that were not men. They were grown boys is what they were. They were just young boys, young men who had gotten older, who still had the same mentality they had when they were 14 years old. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, penitentiary is no playground. There's nowhere you want to go laughing and joking and playing all day. But even with me telling you that, well, it must happen or this video wouldn't exist. That's exactly what a lot of guys do. They go in there and every day, it's a game. Every day it's so funny, ha ha, he he. You got guys that will bid off of other guys. What is bidding, Jay? Bidding is the act of passing time by laughing, joking, poking fun of the next man. You're using that man to pass your time. You're using that man as something to laugh at. You are bidding off of him. Guys play too much. That's the bottom line. With the with the gay jokes, with the with the touching, with the name calling, guys play way too much. I was never much on the playing. I'm more of a serious individual. I understand the severity of things and how quick things can go go left. As we know, it always ends bad. So I'm not big on the plan. I've had dudes try it in the past, and I tell them, go on somewhere, man. I'm not no toy. I'm not here to play. Get you a Nintendo. This ain't a game. So today we're going to do when playing goes wrong. These guys just, and usually they get worn. But these guys just keep going and going and going until somebody speaks that universal language, violence. Once somebody puts that out there, it has a reaction that kind of lets you know that's where they're at, you'll stop playing. Some people just won't learn. So that's what we're doing today. When playing goes wrong, you play too much, stop playing. Look at you now, Mike. <laughs> With all that being said, you know how to see it. You know how to live this. So, let's relive it. Some people have to learn the hard way. But today's story, I've had it go wrong. Let's make that clear. But it was prior to my last bid. It was prior to the prison trip. It was prior to the jail before the prison trip. It was many, many years ago. And it went bad in the form of slap boxing. I've talked about Philly. I've talked about the multi-purpose room, which is a room with several bunks in it. It's kind of an overflow where they pack guys in, and then every other cell has two guys in it. You also have what's called dorms. Dorms is a dorm is just a, essentially a huge warehouse with bunks everywhere. Open base shower where everybody showers together. There's really no privacy. Guys play a lot in the dorms. There are no-nos. You don't play where a man's sleeping. You don't run beside another man's bunk. You don't cut through that area, which we call the cut. You guys usually put chairs there to block stuff off like that. But before the new jail got built out here, and it was I'm talking Chesterfield County Jail, we had the old Chesterfield County Jail. Now you had 
tiers and you had dorms. So you actually had cells, but then you had the dorm life also. I've got a group of guys in there that I feel comfortable with. I've been in here now maybe right at six months. I was doing a little six-month bid, right? I'm coming up on the end of my six months. I feel good with these dudes. I know these guys. I eat with these guys. I laugh with these guys. We know some of the same people. We're constantly building together, talking. These are my dudes. I chop it up with them. You know, we talk. We do all the things that come with being locked up. Me and one of the dudes decide we're going to get the slap box. He gets to talk about, can nobody see these hands? Ta -ta -ta -ta, just playing around, right? And he throws a couple of slaps at me. So I, I, I swat at him. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. You ain't trying to do this. You ain't trying, you ain't trying to do this. Ta -ta. You ain't trying to do And we get the slap box. In. He slaps me. Now, he would proclaim and swear that it was an accidental slap. But this wasn't no, like, peak. No, this was a across the side of my face. I paused. Disbelief. He just, did he just slap me? Yo, did he just, did he just, yo, why you slap me, man? We just, we slap box, I ain't mean to slap you. Come on, come on, come on. Why you just slap me in my, <clears throat> and I take off on him. Call me a bad sport, call me what you want. Not big on being slapped in the face. Probably shouldn't have been slap boxing. We would end up getting into a full-fledged fight right there in the dorm, in the back. Oh, bah, 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 bah. I got him outside the bunk, and it's a narrow aisle. It's not very big between the next bunk, maybe two and a half, three feet till you get to the next bunk. And he's clipped back, flipped over top of the chair, and I've gotten on top of him. And our other homeboys at first just let us go, just let us rumble. And then they see that, all right, all right, one of them's leaking, dude starts to leak, and they pull me back, they pull him back. And I didn't even, I didn't bust him open. The bunks are made of straight metal steel, and he kind of clipped the side of his head on the, on the side of the bunk, and it made a little mark, and it was a little bit of, you know, red stuff. They pull us apart. Stop, stop, man, y'all tripping, y'all tripping, y'all supposed to be homeboys. We get up, and we're both heated, because now we put hands on each other. It all started with playing. In that moment there, I told myself, and I was young when this happened, early 20s, I told myself, I'm done playing. When it comes to being locked up, I've already seen where playing will get you. Me and that dude did not speak anymore after that. He felt some type of way. I felt some type of way. Our friendship was dead. It was over with. We had crossed a invisible line. And it all started with the playing. So I tell you, don't play. Now, I've got a lot of stories of when playing goes wrong. Guys love to play. Let's get it Let's get it all the way out there. Guys in prison love to play. They have to find a way to pass time. They have to find a way to do their bid. They're gonna find goofballs. They're gonna find guys to pick on. They're gonna find little victims and they're gonna go at them. And once you allow them to do it, it's ha ha he he. And they see you ain't gonna do nothing about it. Oh, it's 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 hunting season. It's on. It's duck hunting, and you are the duck. They're constantly gonna pick on you. They're gonna laugh at you. They're gonna joke on you all day, every day. Some guys can take it, and they will not take it anywhere past that. It's just like, well, I guess I'm just gonna get picked on. And there's some guys that, hey, yo, yo, don't do that. I'm gonna tell you one time, one time only. I don't play. Don't do that. I was one of those guys. Don't do that. I don't play. Now, nobody knows my backstory. Nobody knows that once upon a time, I got to fight with somebody behind playing. Nobody knows that I've got to fight with people in the streets behind playing. They don't know why I am the way I am. They just know that I come across as a serious individual, that I'm aggressive at times, and that I do not do the playing. There's a difference between playing and joking. Like I've had cellmates like me and Twin, me and Woody, me and different dudes that had in the cell with me, we would joke. We would do that in the comfort of the cell amongst each other. But we would never do something like that with other people around. Because when you do it, then they see it and they might get the idea that it's okay to do. And then you might have to end up tightening him up because your cell may want to play games in front of people. <sighs> Too cold for no hoodie. I had a dude one point to slap above me. Serious guy. I do not remember the guy's name. I didn't kick it with the dude. Not many people kicked it with him. Now, there might be a guy in your pod that doesn't talk to anybody. And if he does talk to anybody, a lot of times it'll be his cellmate or one guy out of all these men. This guy in particular talked to his cellmate. 
I would never see him out in the day room talking. I would never see him conversing with anybody else, joking with anybody else, walking with anybody else. But I would hear him and his celly make little remarks. And then if you looked in the direction of them while they were doing this, he would see other people looking at him and he would go back to his serious nature and continue on his journey of whatever he's doing, whether it was going to the phone or going to the microwave or getting some hot water or going outside to walk by himself, whatever the case may be. He didn't joke in front of people. He didn't talk in front of people. And the only person I ever saw him speak with was his cellmate. It's a known fact. You do not look in other people's cells. That's a no-no. That is the equivalent to me coming up to your house and peeking in your window. That cell, for the time being, becomes your home. One of the first times I really heard this dude's voice would be the same day that this whole situation takes place. There are guys congregating on the top tier. The top tier, there's a rail so that you don't just fall off and splat on the ground like Frogger. So these guys are in front of his cell and they're all hanging on the top tier, just where well, you're not supposed to hang out, leaning on the rail and they're talking. It's like three or four dudes and they're right in front of his cell and they're talking to each other, playing around. And I guess the dude is in the cell and feels like they keep looking at his cell. So he comes to the door and he's an older man, older black dude. He tells him, hey, don't be the eyeball hustling, huh? Matter of fact, y'all take the plane on some wells. Don't be in front of my cell playing. It's very common. I've done it. I've seen others do it time and time again. Dudes get a little attitude about them, man. It's back like this, your presence. You don't like it, make bond, man. You don't like it, go home. Like, ain't nobody tell you to get locked up. You don't be telling people, dude ain't playing about here. Dude turns around like he's going to go get something and do his, all right, man, all right, all right. They move it on down the way. A little bit later in the day, his cellmate takes it this time to play. Now, his cellmate congregates and frolics with a whole bunch of different people. He's just kind of like the class clown, always joking amongst everybody. Take something that belongs to the old man. I don't even know what it was he took. It could have been a radio. It could have been beard trimmers. It could have been some clothing items. But he takes something that belongs to the old man and takes it to one of his homeboys and says, here, hold this, hold this. He wants to make the old man think that somebody came in the cell and stole something. You do not play like that. And so a man works at a place called Enterprise. Enterprise is a warehouse within the prison that makes things. At the time, we were making office cubicles. You know, like you, uh, Jake from a State Farm, that little cubicle he sits in on his phone calling you at dinner time. We made those in prison. So he would leave in the mornings and on the weekends he was off and he would come back at lunchtime and blah, blah, blah. And right after lunch was in this whole thing when everybody was hanging out from his cell curd. Then he goes back to work. His cellmate takes something to his, takes it on his buddy, says, hold this, man. I'm just trying to mess with the old head. Old head comes back, goes to the shower. Most of these guys will come straight from work, go to the shower, do their routine in the shower. You put lotion on, you put baby powder on, you clip your toenails, you do whatever you're going to do, right? You sit in the cell for about 10 minutes by yourself. You shut the door, and you're, that's your private time. You're getting yourself right. You're checking your hygiene. You're putting all the extra stuff on that we do when we're in prison. When all of a sudden the cell door pops, the old man comes to the door and goes, hey, yo. Now this is a thing you're gonna see. You're gonna see guys address the entire room. And you wanna address the situation. You don't address everybody. Because when you address everybody, somebody's gonna feel some type of way. Somebody's gonna take the bait. He comes out, hey, yo. I don't bother nobody in here. I don't even speak to none of y'all. We don't converse. We don't joke. We don't do none of that. Who went in my cell? I want my back. You better bring my back. As somebody else. Ain't nobody been in your carry your back in the cell, man. And he starts scanning the room. It's the dudes that were hanging out in front of his cell. Now he had had words with them earlier. They weren't afraid of him. It's like four versus one. He scans the room looking, and he sees that same little crowd of dudes. What'd you say? Bring my... If someone, whoever took my... He's making threats now. Anybody in here can get it. I swear to God, I leave everybody alone. But y'all just want to try me. Y'all going to try me. Y'all running around playing that gang stuff don't scare me. That stuff y'all doing don't scare me. Do y'all know who I am? Do y'all know what I've done? Do you know what? This man is on the top tier snapping. He Once again... Let me reiterate, he does not play. He does not talk. He does not have no friends. The only person he plays with is his cellmate. Meanwhile, his cellmate is down in his homeboy's cell, snickering. He's up there, look, he's tripping. He's tripping, he's tripping. 
This old man continues to snap to where some other people start telling him, all right, Pops, hey, chill out, man. You drawing attention. You got the officer now on the guard. She's in the control booth looking around. What's going on? What's up? Who am I locked up in here? Who's making all this noise? What's going on in my pod, right? And he's on the top tier, pacing back and forth down the tier, steadily making his threats. Them dudes down there that he keeps eyeballing that made that little comment that he got into earlier, they're now his prime suspects. They were hanging out in front of his cell. The one dude did turn back and look in his cell several times. He was only looking back because there was a person behind him, but that person was in the confines of his home, of his cell, sitting on his bunk where he should be. Now, there's a certain way you got to go about getting your stuff back. Ain't nobody going to raise their hand and say, hey, I'm a thief. So you can let it be known, hey, you can give it to my cellmate. You can sit it by my cell. But what he tells everybody is, y'all got to lock down. Put my stuff on the table. That table right there. Walk over, sit my stuff down. Have somebody else go sit my stuff down. And it's okay. If my stuff ain't back on that table or back to me by the time we lock down, I'm going to do what I got to do in here. And we all going to get locked down. Because I'm going to show my... And this, I want my stuff back. You still got little dudes in here that's not respecting his gangster, not respecting his OG status, making their little slick comments. These are the dudes that think the penitentiary is a playground. These are the dudes that have not been severely hurt yet or been reached out and touched yet or had nobody go upside their head yet because had they, they wouldn't be making these comments. He finishes saying what he's got to say, and he goes in his cell. I'm sitting out there with my cellmate, looking up at all the chaos. At this point, I don't know. That his cellmate has taken his stuff. At this point, I don't know that his cellmate has taken whatever he took and took it to another person's cell. His cellmate comes and sits behind us and is talking to another dude and says, Yo, he's snapping, he's snapping. Yeah, it's, and he just goes on into little details about what he did. Ain't nobody take nothing. And I took it, I put it in the bag and I took it over to Mont's cell. Monty's got it. But, man, you're going to get Monty in trouble. Monty ain't take it. I took it. I'm going to take it back up there. It's just, a good, it's just a joke, man. I'll take it up there for fortnight. That man's going to snap. He's liable to grab you and break up. Man, we be playing like that. He's a gentle giant, man. He ain't going to hurt nobody. I'm sitting here, sitting beside my cellmate, listening to this dude talk behind me about what he's done. That man is not playing. You are young and dumb. You're playing with a killer. Maybe an hour goes by. I glance up at the cell, and every now and then you'd see this man come to the cell, and he'd stand in the doorway, and we're still smoking at the time, and he's standing there smoking. He's rolled up, scanning the room, trying to see if anybody makes eye contact with him. Now, everybody's looking in his direction because he's done snapped out. He's done made threats to everybody. He's done addressed an entire pod full of people. So people keep glancing at him, but if he looks at you, you, you look away. And you see him. You can see that his blood pressure's turned all the way up. It's like you've seen his skin color change from black to red. He is angry. He is big mad. He's going to react. He's going to explode. Go get his stuff from Marcel and take it back up to him and get whatever you got coming for playing games. Dude doesn't. Just in his doorway, smoking a cigarette, just looking around the room. Oh, they're going to take something from me. What you don't realize is just because a man gets old don't mean that what's in here and what's in here changes. Your physique may change. The color of your hair may change. But a monster is a monster. An animal is an animal. A gangster is a gangster. Don't let age trick you. The first thing I noticed when he first initially started yelling was he still had his shower shoes on. I guess he was in the middle of putting lotion on and baby powder when he looked around and seen whatever it was that was missing was missing. But now as I look up and he's in his doorway smoking a cigarette, he's got his jeans on. He's got his boots on. He's what we call laced up. He's ready to go. He'd stand there smoking a cigarette. Meanwhile, his cellmate has made this comment. He's done moved on and is over there joking with another group of guys telling them what's going on. When I see the old head, make his move he comes out of his cell comes down the tier and then there's that one dude out of them four that was standing with them guys in front of the cell that made the little comment that man you don't like it make mom blah 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 this dude is standing down there with his little buddies in them and at the time we had sodas we used to get the the canned sodas they taken our locks away from us because so many people had gotten there rearranged with these locks they said yeah this is a weapon we're selling on commissary let's take this away but the old man comes down the staircase and he's got a towel in his hand. To the, to the untrained eye, it would look like he was holding a towel. To a convict, you would know that there's something in that towel. I know 
there was something in there, too. Now, these guys are standing underneath the staircase at this point, so he has to come down the staircase, loop around the back, and come up underneath the staircase where they are, and as he turns that corner to come around, he drops that towel, and he has a sock, and he has a soda. Now, if you've never seen the damage that a can of Coca-Cola inside of a sock can do, well, then you've missed some amazing stuff. He turns the corner. By the time he turns the corner, you can't see who it is coming down the staircase. If you're under it, you can only see the boots. As he turns the corner, them dudes look at that dude that made that comment. Oh, hey, Cox back with the sock. Boom. Swings the soda. You seen the Twisted Tea commercial? What? That one comes across that boy's head with that sock. <laughs> soda explodes. When a can of soda explodes on impact, it makes a very loud noise. Similar to maybe what you would consider a 22 gunshot. Pops that boy upside his head. Boom! No sooner than he hit him, the boy kind of did a stumble back. The old man popped him with it. Boom! Dropped the sock, reached out, grabbed him with that strap. Dumps him on his neck. His homeboys and them at this point are supposed to rush in and start attacking because that's their ace that just got scooped up and slammed on their neck. They don't. That head versus pavement, pavement wins every single time. Dude hits the ground, thunk, and does Mr. Potato Head. Lays there. Old head comes from underneath the staircase because the other three are scattered out. Where y'all going? I want my shit. I'm not playing, man. I want my sh This lady that was in the control booth that watched all this transpire has been watching that cell. She's not stupid. She's no rookie. She's been here a long time. She knows. She calls this her pod. This is my pod. This is my shift. Ain't nothing happening in my pod, in my house, on my shift. She's watching. When she saw him come out that cell, she called the officer that was on the floor. We have an officer that sometimes will just do rounds. They'll just walk around. He was next door in 200 pod, walking through there, just making sure that nothing was going on. No tattooing, no funny business, no body getting hurt. Everything is as it should be. And she went ahead and radioed it. Hey, you need to come over here now. Yeah, such, 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 such is making this move. So as he pops that boy, picks him up and slams him, boom, that officer comes through the door. The old man is a cuff money the staircase. The other three are scattered. He's, come here, come here. He's going to put that strength on him. Don't get his age twisted like I told you. These boys are rabbit status. They done messed with a real one. They done ran up on an OG playing games. When in reality, they ain't done nothing. Shouldn't have been in front of his cell. The officer, whoa, 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 runs up and up. Old man, he don't care nothing about that. He ain't never going to hurt you. Do Back up off me. Move, move. The officer scurries out the way, and he's still trying to catch these three youngins, but much faster than him. They've all split off in different directions. He's trying to figure out which one he can get. So now he's kind of more or less pacing. Lock down, lock down. We all lock down. You got Mr. Potato Head laying over here with his, his bean peel back from the concrete. You got Old Head out there in the pod pacing around, jumping around. Still trying to grab three dudes. Three dudes run up to the front. She opens the Sally Port door. That's the door that lets you into the pod. They step out into the Sally Port. She shuts the door. Now he's at the Sally Port door. La, 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 going in on them. Meanwhile, this officer's about 20 feet from him, trying to keep his distance because he definitely don't want to get dunked on his head like old boy did. Old head starts doing laps in the pod. Y'all want to mess with somebody. It's always the one that don't bother nobody. Y'all want to mess with. I've been in here longer than some of y'all been alive. Walks on the staircase, bad, by Mr. Potato Head. Boots Mr. Potato Head in his head one time and continues to do his rounds. He's real lucky all he calls that second boot and he didn't get done dirty. A bunch of guards come in. Got these three young dudes outside of Sally Port. Now they're in what's called the vestibule, which is like the waiting area in the front of the building. They're in a safe zone. The guards come in. They're ready to spring, ready to do the most. He, I ain't been through this shit, man, taking shit, me, man. I ain't, come on, let's go. Now he's got to go to the hole. He's going to be back there for a while because we don't know what's going on with this dude. He still ain't woke up. And that kick did everything he was supposed to do when you kick somebody with a penitentiary boot. They don't put cuffs on him. He does what a lot of these OGs I've seen done before. He walks himself out of there, escorts himself out. They'll cuff him, but they'll cuff him once he gets out front. He's no longer around inmates anymore, around no other cons, and his blood pressures went down. So they take these three dudes that are in the front, and they move them off to the side where they're safe. And they have officers standing there. They have officers come in and escort him out the building. And just like that, he's gone. Following day, we come off lock, at which point that dude will start to tell people, damn, man, I ain't, I ain't expecting to snap like that. Yeah, I took it, man. I took it over Mont's cell, but it was just supposed to be funny. It was a ha-ha, he-he, right? Nah, not ha-ha, he-he. 
You had four dudes that were standing in front of your cell. Now there's only three because one got dunked on his head and sent to the infirmary. But you got three dudes that got embarrassed. Three guys that ran, that played chicken, that played rabbit from that old man. That now feel some type of way because a game you played on your cellmate put them in a situation. So no sooner than we come off lock and he's talked to a couple different people and everybody now knows that he's responsible for this whole ordeal this dude comes out of his cell, top tier. He ain't got no cellmate. Old head wants to sell because he wants to play games. He goes down and talks to his people. By now, word has spread that nothing got stolen, that his cellmate was playing games, and he had took what he had and took it over to Mont, and Mont was holding it. He was supposed to take it back, and it was all supposed to be a big joke, but the old head snapped and got way, way out of hand. Dude got you know, dunked on his head. He got Grandma Maude. He got Charles Barkley. He got Shaq right on top of his head, and then he got... World Cup, World Cup, boom, right inside of the face. And three dudes that ran from the old head fell some type of way. So we go to child, we come back from child, and a lot of times you'll have to lock down until they call first movement and they call school. Some officers are cool and they don't lock you down. This officer didn't lock us down. This dude comes back from child, goes up in his cell. Now he's moved his stuff from the top bunk to the bottom bunk because old head's no longer in there. So now he's, got the, he's the king of the castle. He ain't got to sleep on the top bunk. He can now sleep on the bottom bunk. When I see those three same dudes that were running from the old head make their move, they come down the tier, go into the cell, and they commence to whooping on him, beating on him. He commences to hooting, hollering, screaming, making all this noise. Ah, 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 ah. They're in there wrecking him. Officer in control booth sees what's going on. She shuts the door. One of the guys gets out the cell. The other two are locked in there. The only thing I can figure is they knew they were caught. They've already done the damage. They've already attacked him. He did something that caused them to be put in harm's way. One of theirs to be taken away. The guards shut the door on them. They can't get out. So it's clear she knows they're in there. It's clear that other guards are on the way. Not even been, not even 12 hours and you're hearing lockdown, lockdown, lockdown again. The one dude that did get out made his way to a cell. A whole bunch of officers come in. They go to his cell. They get him. They go up there. They pop that cell and them two dudes. Come up out the cell with that red Kool-Aid all over the front of him where they done popped that dude's melon. He's laid up and they're all messed up. And they pack his stuff and roll his stuff out. Now we've got empty cells throughout the pod. What started as one guy playing ended with six people going to the hole. All four of the guys that were standing in front of that cell, one goes to the infirmary, the other three go to the hole. Plus the guy that played the joke and his cellmate both Ended up in the hole and in the infirmary. <laughs> that is just one. One. Of. I don't know how many stories are playing. I've seen a lot of almost scripted. I mean almost to the T. When it comes to that type of situation. We got cellmates playing games. I had a homeboy of mine snake do it with a pair of beard trimmers one time with me. And I was getting ready to spaz all the way out. And snake said hey hey hey. I'm just playing, man. He gave them back to me. I said, don't play like that. Because had I thought somebody stole something from me in here, you was going to cause a whole lot of problems. That's exactly what that old man thought. Except his cellmate, I don't know if it was the fear of how the old man acted. And it was like, oh, man, I can't tell him what I did. He's going he's gonna, to, he's looking to hurt somebody. at now. But maybe I played a little too much here. I don't know why he didn't just say, hey. I did it, man. It was supposed to be a joke. Ain't nobody been in the cell. Ain't nobody going to disrespect you like that, old timer. You know they're not going to disrespect you like that. It's right here. I took it over to Mont. He didn't do that. He let it ride. And that old man stood in that doorway, stooling with them boots laced up, smoking them roll-ups back to back, back to back, back to back, until he decided, oh, they think I'm playing. They're not going to give me whatever it was that was taken back. I'm going to show these dudes that I'm not never going home. What are they going to do, put me in the hole? That's just an extension of my house. That's all it is. When you're a lifer, when you're never going home, you're going to take a whole lot of trips to the hole. What is the hole? It's just another part of the prison. It's just a part of the process. It's just another room that you're going to stay in while incarcerated. I hope you all enjoyed today's story of when playing goes wrong. That's why I tell you, do not play. Even from the, the slap box and to do trying to play with his cellmate. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know and I'll do some more. There's so many different when playing goes wrong. It's like every day somebody plays and something goes wrong. You might not see it, but you better believe that it happened. Crazy, crazy world we live in. 
With all that being said, these jails, these penitentiaries, these facilities, these lifers. Oh, just crazy world inside of an already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, and the awesome real ones out there, because y'all still watching me. And y'all know how we do. Salute. You play too much. And you say he's just a friend. Oh, baby. <laughs>